What common foods in your country are considered delicacies by foreigners? I worked for a charity in Iraq for a year and we'd buy a dozen lamb chops for the equivalent of $5. That's like $60 to buy in the US and it's worse quality. Hum. Forest berries perhaps. I live in Finland. We have a lot of forests. So lot of berries such as blueberries and lingonberries. Every man's rights mean that you can just go and pick as much as you can find. It's kinda one of those things where if you live near any forested area, and are willing to spend time there come late summer, you'll probably have enough to last until next year in your freezer. We have so much berries that people from poorer countries, Thailand is a common one for some reason, are hired to pick them up, because doing berry picking enough to actually profit monetarily is heavy work, and apparently the pay isn't worth it for most Finns. At the same time, Forest berries are considered a superfood around the world, very healthy and trendy, don't know about actual delicacy status, but definitely a difference in how we think about them. I would add mushrooms for Finland, especially porcinus, halkutati, chanterelles, cantarelli, and c. tuberformis, sapilla vivero, are incredible food mushrooms which are sought after for example, in Italy. We can just go pick them in the forest thanks to our jock Amy Hinoikius, every man's right, which allows anyone to pick mushrooms and berries etc. on public land such as state-owned forests. Not country but in the Rockies area we have huckleberries, they are kind of like blueberries in look but smaller and purple, as for taste they are very sweet and slightly tart, they are delicious and tourists usually like them. Crane worst or carnial and sausage. Protected by EU for being Slovenian speciality that can only be made here but loved and eaten by millions of Germans and Austrians. It took me while right along to recognize this food because I know it as coarse Craner. D. We had some Japanese exchange students at our university in the US. And when they saw the cubed melon on the salad bar, the standard watermelon cantaloupe honeydew mix, they thought we were living like royalty. Apparently melon is a really expensive special occasion food over there. I heard that the first melons in Japan are sold for thousands of dollars, and then the price settles at about 50 stroke 60 dollar. Falafel. This is basically poor people food in Egypt along with other type of bean, called fool. Both of these are the cheapest kind of meal you get off food carts. You can feed a whole family on less than one dollar. On the other hand, American fast food is considered fancy. Getting dinner from McDonald's is a thing for special occasion. So seeing falafel sandwich being sold for more than McDonald's was a bit mind blowing. A good baguette. I've seen American tourists walk out of a bakery with like 12 of them. Slow down dude. They are made all day long. You don't need that many. It's just the guy from the math problems. Shakshuka, you get it at hipster restaurants served on a skillet for $22.99 when at home pops makes that crap when there's nothing to eat food and everybody is too tired to cook. I'm from Russia and I had an acquaintance who was going to marry an Irish guy. They lived in Russia for some time the guy went completely bonkers for caviar of capelin fish. It's not really a delicacy, it's not rare or expensive at all. Probably a prox $2.50 3 a can. But he liked it so much he wanted to bring a crate of it for their wedding in Europe. Needless to say his soon to be wife wife was not amused. Imagine wanting to bring a crate of peanut butter or something to your wedding. If someone brought a crate of peanut butter to a wedding I am sure they would make friends. Water. Our tap water is perfect and no local ever buys bottled. Iceland. Ah dang. In Canada and I'm pretty sure elsewhere too. Coca Cola and Pepsi and certainly Nestle. Bottle the tap water and sell them for dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign and lot of idiots buy the 24 bottle crate for dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign when on the bottle it's written tap water from random city. I hate Darsani and others. French here so. A lot of our food. If there's one thing we know how to do, it's exporting our food as fancy delicacies. The truth is, apart from pastries desserts which can be pretty complicated to put together, the effort to make even just 12 croissants, most French food is just peasant stuff spruced up for the modern times. The logic is almost always, take a cheapish cup of meat, cook it either in wine or in broth for a few hours with a bunch of onions and whatever herbs grow nearby, add carrots potatoes. 
Enjoy. That's the basis for Boaf Bogwignon, Kokovin, Gigodiano, Pot or Few, Blanket Devo, etc. If you want to get fancy you can wrap it in pastry, and that's another dozen French specialties right there. There's not really a way to frick it up, really. It's meat, cooked at low heat over several hours, with a bunch of aromatic herbs. As long as you've got a sturdy pot and you don't let it dry, you'll get something in the range from edible to delicious. I think a lot of this has to do with the French really taking over fancy dining at the beginning of the 20th century. I mean Escoffier literally wrote the book and then every culinary school taught French cooking almost exclusively for decades after. But that's just my theory. Durian. The number of durian farmers who have found overnight wealth are astonishing due to export demand. Durian is so polarizing. Seems like you either love it or hate it. In Melbourne. They evacuated a whole university thinking there was a gas leak. Turned out someone had eaten durian and thrown the remains in a garbage can. Do maple syrup or pouting count? I know at the least. In university I had a friend who came up from the US and thought pouting was the greatest thing ever. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised more of the US hasn't adopted it. Fries, cheese curds, and gravy. Sounds more like an American thing. Not sure what other countries' opinions on it are. Any kind of sheep meat, lamb, mutton, etc. In non-sheep countries it can be quite expensive. Here it is the cheapest meat and commonly used instead of pork as the filler meat in grocery store products such as sausages. Also, fresh fish. The fish processing time is pretty short here, with fish instantly getting unloaded and sent to factories after the boats arrive and then quickly processed and sold to consumers, so that the fish is even fresher than in some other seaside countries. In sheep countries it's getting massively more expensive. I'm in England and can see sheep farms from my house but lamb is still a good 1 stroke 3 more expensive than beef by weight. An Indian prepared badgie on Master Chef Australia. Badgie is available at every 5 blocks or so. The whole recipe is cut onion potato, coat it with grampler and spice and fry. Indians who saw that surely laughed. In South Indian states bhaji is called bhajji. You can make bhaji in a hostel room. Jesus Christ this entire thread is teaching me about cravings for food I've never even heard of or know how to pronounce correctly. Carry on everyone. I'll be right here salivating. Pina colitis I guess. Here in PR you can get them absolutely everywhere with or without alcohol. It's mostly just a refreshing drink. In Mexico many local ice cream stores serve it as agua fresca. Flavored beverage with a crap ton of sugar and ice for those foreign to the language. Back in high school some acquaintances of mine would buy a 1L cup, drink some of it and then add some Bacardi to the mix for a full pina colada experience. It tasted nice, to be fair. Are quail eggs delicacies because I could just buy them at a grocery store here like normal eggs but I rarely ever hear of them anywhere else. If you go to Asian supermarket, you can buy them boiled peeled in cans. As Italian living in Germany I can say that basically every food from my culture is considered fancy here. A couple of days ago I saw an Arancino, cheap fried rice cake, sold for 5 euros. In Italy a good Arancino is 1 euro. In my experience a lot of common everyday French foods are high-end specialty foods here in the US. In France, every corner store I went to sold the type of cheese, charcuterie, and pate that you'd have to go to Whole Foods for here. And it isn't particularly expensive, it's just normal food. Like I went to a little grocer in Paris and got pieces of 4 different cheeses, and I thought, this is going to be like $28. No, it was like $6. I'm just used to what Whole Foods charges. I went to a big department store in the Paris suburbs and there was just an aisle that had all the dry cured ham and such and tins of pate, laid out as casually as Lunchables in the US. It's just regular food. Whole Foods also tries to sell flavored seltzers and onion powder as specialty foods. Microga has a pretty extensive cheese selection for normal prices. $5 to $10 per pound. Allow me cheese. It's a huge staple in Cyprus and we eat it all the times but in the US I only ever see it as barbacks and sometimes at exotic cheese plates. Halloumi is nice but I really wish I could find kefalotteri in the UK. 
Saganaki is one of life's greatest joys. Pheasant. I grew up in South Dakota and we hunted pheasants every day during the season. In college it was a cheap source of food and ate it all the time. In Central and South American countries it is a delicacy and people could not believe I ate it every day. Fijoda. In its core it's working class food, though usually a fancier version is considered a delicacy, and it's rarely as good as the real thing BTW. Also those are not as known but when I lived abroad I blew people's mind with peo de cuijo and brigadero, which are incredibly common and easy to make. My mill makes the best dang fijoda. Bless her Brazilian cooking. Butter chicken. As an Indian staying in Europe, I hate butter chicken because it has taken over Indian cuisine in Europe and no one wants to try the real stuff. I'm a Brita living in the US. I have to make butter chicken as the wife can't take any heat in food. I would kill for something other than butter chicken. I live in Japan but I'm from the US. Whenever I go back home I buy a few bags of lint chocolates from the drugstore as souvenirs. They're dirt cheap in the US. But for whatever reason they're a luxury chocolate in Japan, and the same bags would cost $30 here. Fried chicken. It's actually become a special holiday meal in countries like Japan where you have to reserve your bucket weeks in advance, mainly because of clever marketing. But here, people would laugh so hard at that, cause it's just fried chicken. Speculus speculus biscoff cookers. Delicacy might be a big word but people seem to lose their minds over these cookers. Trader Joe's has a speculus ice cream that I can only get once in a while because I will eat the whole dang box in one go if I'm not being monitored by a more responsible adult. Depending on where in the US you live, lobster, king crab, dungeness crab, abalone, spotted prawns, geoduck, etc. can be pretty cheap. Normal food but for foreigners they go nuts over these things because they are so expensive elsewhere. Yeah lobster for my part of Canada too. It used to be considered poor people food and every Atlantic Canadian knows that aside from the wharf the best place to get it is from the back of a van from a chain smoking fisherman who advertises with crappy spray painted signs. I've had American friends ask me to send over Cadbury chocolate, Imo it's not as nice as it used to be since it was bought out by Kraft. The irony, but people still go nuts for it. Once, on an episode of Modern Family, Mitchell carried a huge poutine in a pretty glass casserole dish to the dinner table and announced that he'd made poutine. A Canadian delicacy first time I'd ever heard it described as that. Poutine is drunk or junk food. I honestly think it was used because the punchline was well I'm not pouting gee that in my mouth. When I was in Afghanistan I would trade menthol cigarettes for falafel and kebabs. They couldn't believe how many of those suckers I could put away. More of an out of state thing, but I live in Hawaii and I was so confused when I went to a poke shop on the mainland. It was so expensive for barely any poke and they offered to put weird stuff in it like pineapple. You can buy a pound of ahi shoyu poke from my local supermarket's poke counter for like 15 bucks. Same price they were charging for a bowl of subpa stuff on the mainland. I ate something from a street vendor in Beijing, China that was one of the tastiest things I have ever had in my entire life. I don't know what it was. Sort of like a crepe. Crunchy and savory. Bean sprouts. Egg. I don't know to this day. I would literally kill someone to have it again. Foreigners go crazy for stroopwafels. They are very nice don't get me wrong. But I think we have other equally great pastries that people don't try often. Dutch food isn't super interesting when it comes to meals, but I think we're great at pastries and snack foods. Not from my country but available in places all over the world. Chicken a la Kiev. Usually a dish in slightly fancy restaurants all over the world. Big called Kotliti po Kievski in Ukraine, where it's just above a fast food snack. Cheaply available at Puzita Harta. I, Canadian, was visiting a friend in France, and we were planning to visit Strasbourg for a few days. I mentioned that that's where Cronenborg beer is brewed. Maybe we could take a tour? Surely freshly made Cronenborg blank is divine. She looked at me in horror and told me that's a redneck beer. In Canada a six pack will set you back about $15. It's fancy lol. There it's on par with Molson or Budweiser. 
We never did tour the factory, but I drank cheap bottles of it the whole time I was in the country, while she watched in disgust. IDK if this counts but I'm English and once explained to an American friend that we make huge Yorkshire puddings and then put an entire roast dinner inside them and he got unreasonably excited about the idea. Asado, Argentinian BBQ, you wouldn't believe how much local restaurants overcharge tourists for an asado just because the place is nice and the asado is made with special wood or whatever. PH, they were literally sold in every streets in Vietnam and they're considered exotic and valued here in the US. Stella Artois, apparently, I've seen it being served on a tray with a little glass of nuts and whatnot abroad, you don't get that with a Stella or in fact any Pills style beer over here. In the UK, Stella Artois have incredibly fancy adverts but it's the preferred drink of somebody who wants a quick, cheap lager with a kick. I did find it's held in a bit higher regard in Belgium, it's one of the few lagers that I sent super sweet. But the idea of getting Stella in a balloon glass and quaffing it like wine is somewhat hilarious to me. Not country to country, but state to state. I live in Maine which is prime lobster territory in the US. I can get it cheaper here than most other places on the planet. TBH. I really don't get the hype. The efforts to crack it open and pull out the meat is not worth the payoff. Just drink a cup of melted butter. That's all you can taste anyway. In Jewish cuisine, corned beef tongue is a very expensive delicacy you can only still get at a handful of high-end kosher delis these days. Then many years later I learned that tongue is a popular and cheap taco meat in Mexican cuisine, and is also really delicious. Although it's been going up in price in the US as more people realize how yummy tongue is. Flank steak used to be cheap, ish, in the US. Now it fetches a premium. Not exactly the same thing. But in high school we had some German exchange students come for a semester, and I ended up hanging out with one who had joined the football team, for the complete American high school experience. After practice a lot, there was a subway not too far away from school, so we'd often go there after practice, and he just absolutely lost his mind over it. He thought the whole idea was the most wonderful thing in the world. He was nervous ordering initially, even though his English was better than mine lol. But you should have seen his face light up going down the line and picking out the toppings he wanted every single time we went. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.